Hello and welcome to today's Veritas Net Backup 8.2 Notable Capabilities and Considerations webinar brought to you by Insight Cloud and Data Center Transformation. I'm Amanda Sharp, Marketing Specialist at Insight Cloud and Data Center Transformation and will be your moderator today. Before we begin, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. This webcast is designed to be interactive between you and the presenters. The webcast console you are looking at can be completely customized. You can resize or move any of the windows that you have open. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can click the Q&A widget at the bottom and submit your questions. All questions from this webcast will be captured. If you are experiencing any technical difficulties, please visit the webcast help guide by clicking on the question mark, question mark icon below the presentation window. The help guide covers common technical issues. I would now like to turn our presentation over to our presenter, Clay Hockendorf. Clay, the floor is yours. Thank you, Amanda, and thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, today, we're going to go over uh, NetBackup 8.2, what's new. We'll look at some of the features that, are, that have been included, and we'll go through some of the upgrade considerations and, and some of the reasons why, why you may want to look at upgrading the, to NetBackup 8.2. Uh, we've also got Chet Boardman, uh, who will be handling any of the, the Q&A uh, in the background. So what we're going to cover today is really what's new in 8.2. Uh, we'll talk about some of the enhanced virtualization support, talk about some of the changes to the dashboard within the NetBackup web UI. We'll talk a little bit about the expanded RESTful APIs and the Swagger interface and some things around DX updates. Uh, we'll talk about experiences so far and, and, and maybe why you want to look at upgrading to NetBackup 8.2. So really, what's, what's new in NetBackup 8.2? Uh, this is a very high-level look at, at some of the features that are included. Uh, but you, what you'll see is Veritas has, has really broken these out into four different sections. So focusing on new workloads, focusing, of course, on cloud, operational simplicity, and then compliance and governance. And within the workload side, we've added some things on, uh, specific to VMware, so being able to do agentless restores uh, across the environment, uh, support for SQL availability groups with the intelligent policies, additional support for Nutanix and the recovery experience, um, added support for Red Hat KVM, and, and new support for OpenStack and vCloud Director. Uh, on the cloud side, things like backing up to the cloud and archiving in the cloud, those are, those are two new things where they've added some additional capabilities and, and features. Uh, the ability to DR to the cloud and, again, in the cloud, uh, leveraging some of the other the other tool sets that integrate with NetBackup, access control management specific to AWS, being able to move petabytes of data to the cloud with things like um, AWS uh, Snowball and 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 later with Azure Box, excuse me, Azure Box, and native backup in the cloud. How do we protect workloads in the cloud, leveraging the tools that Veritas provides? Again, with operational simplicity, uh, Veritas is very focused on, on making things easier from an administrative perspective. So really simplifies, simplifying the user experience. In NetBackup 8.2, uh, they added their, their new user interface, which is web-based, and they've added additional features and functionality into that web console with NetBackup 8.2. They've added some additional APIs. We'll go a little bit deeper into those a little later on. Uh, the upgrade experience has been, has been enhanced specific to how we upgrade media servers and clients within the environment. Um, integration with, with things like vRealize plugin. And then on the compliance and governance, how do we, how do we control access to uh, the NetBack of environment? So adding role-based access control, uh, the ability to, to leverage two-factor authentication, um, and, and the ability to plug into an external CA if, if needed within your environment. Some of the other things that are noted at the bottom, NetBackup did make some changes to how they, how they actually start backup jobs. So we can actually start more than one backup job per second. Um, and, and they've added some enhancements to the pre-upgrade tools. So instead of us relying on a, on a, on a specific patch uh, to, to make sure we're checking the environment prior to an upgrade, as long as we're uh, providing telemetry information to Veritas, we're going to get an upgraded pre-check experience every time that we run an upgrade. So specific to the VMware agentless restores, um, so that, that does allow us to restore a file to a VM client without installing an agent on that client. In NetBackup 8.2, it did require an appliance. This version works with any storage. 
The supported VM clients are uh, RHEL, SUSE Linux, and Windows. And the way that it works is it leverages a recovery host between the master and media server, which communicates directly with the ESX environment. And what it's really doing under the covers is it's leveraging the VX update feature to bundle up that recovery package, and it pushes it off to the VM. And it's, it's used to just temporar temporarily install a, a very lightweight recovery platform, and then it's cleaned up after the restore is completed. Again, with NetBackup 8.2 and some of the new things in the web UI, they've added some um, additional recovery options specific to VMware. So instant access, the ability to access a VM from the backup storage was, was included in 8.1.2. Now we can do things like append string to file names, overwrite existing files, restore directories without crossing mount points. Uh, we can define the recovery host, the data store, and then how we move that data back to our uh, ESX environment. We've added some things uh, specific to KVM as well. So again, overwrite the existing virtual machine, power on after the recovery, defining things like the recovery host, do we want the original network configuration, uh, do we need to create a new VMU UID, uh, removing tag associations, and then reformat of restor uh, the restored virtual disk, right? So e either original, thick, or thin. So these are all features that are specific to the new web UI that, again, was introduced in 8.1.2 and then further enhanced in, in 8.2. 8 so for those of you that haven't seen the new dashboard, this is, this is what it looks like. Very clean and sleek interface. It's meant to give you some very high-level information very quickly at a glance. Very similar to what uh, Veritas uh, tried to do with OpCenter where you could log in and just, just really see the state of your environment. So a little bit different behavior than what most admins uh, work through, which is logging into that backup, scrolling through, looking for failed jobs within the environment. This gives you a single place to, to log in and, and see the, the state of the environment um, really from a snapshot perspective. Some other things that they added in 8.2, was the ability to do frequency and calendar-based schedules. In NetBackup 8.1.2, they uh, introduced the idea of protection plans, meaning we would, we would uh, back up a VM once a day, keep it for X number of weeks, days, or months, and store it on, on a particular type of storage. What this does is it allows us to use the more traditional approach for protecting VMs, which is defining specific days, specific weeks, uh, various days, uh, similar to the granularity that we have today with the NetBack of Java console. Some of the backup options examples, so again, in NetBack of 8.1.2, very limited functionality around VMware workloads. So what they've done is they've added the capabilities that we have within the Java console uh, to, to, to create parity between what we were doing in the NetBack of Java console and the new web UI. So being able to uh, quiesce the virtual machine to um, add, uh, be able to protect the application workloads uh, via a checkbox, just like we, we can today on the VMware tab within the NetBack of Java console. And again, how do we handle things like existing snapshots? So again, allowing that same control that we have with creating policies within the VMware environment and the Java console, we should be able to do that within the uh, new NetBackup web UI, and that's what Veritas introduced here in NetBackup 8.2. And then again, when you're done completing the policy, you can see all the features that were uh, selected or the, or the different parameters that were selected. We can see in, in this case, we have things like accelerator, deduplication, and instant access would be available for this VM. And then in the middle for the backup schedules, we can see that we're taking a backup every day, we're keeping it for, for two weeks, and we have a start window of 24 hours available to protect that backup. And then on the bottom, we can see which backup storage that we're sending those images to. Another, another really powerful feature within NetBackup 8.2 in the new web UI is a tree view of all the assets that we can protect. One of the challenges in the NetBackup Java console is uh, making sure that we're protecting workloads that need to be protected. So what NetBackup does with the new web UI is we'll, it'll go out and automatically discover all of the virtual machines 
that are residing on a particular V center or multiple V centers. What that'll do is it'll pull all the VMs into a into this list, and we can very quickly see and determine if a particular VM is being protected, or more importantly, sort it to find the VMs that aren't currently being protected and apply a protection plan or a backup policy to those VMs. So a very easy way for us to see which virtual machines in our environment are being protected, and then I, more importantly, which ones aren't being protected. One of the other things they added was the ability, ability to look at user sessions. So in the NetBack of Java console, it can be very difficult to know who might be logged into the system and who might be making changes. What this does is it allows any administrator to log in and view all of the user sessions that are, that are currently logged into NetBackup, what time they signed in at, what time they signed in at, and what time that session will expire. One of the really cool things that Veritas has introduced over the last couple of releases are APIs. So in NetBackup 8.0, uh, Veritas started putting the plumbing in place to allow for these APIs to be created. And with NetBackup 8.2, we're now in that, in that uh, version 3 of these APIs where they've added a number of capabilities specific to managing and actually doing some configuration, configuration leveraging APIs. What they've done within the NetBackup web UI is added the ability to use API keys. So we can generate a key and leverage that within our API calls and set an expiration time for that specific API key. What that does is it allows uh, folks to, instead of trying to grab a token or use some sort of scripting, we can still authorize an application uh, to leverage the, the NetBack of APIs within the new web UI. And again, just some more details on um, what it looks like within the web UI and, and looking at uh, which domain, the description, modified and valid until date. So I kind of mentioned the APIs that they added in 8.2. So this, this list isn't, uh, doesn't include all of the APIs that have been there from 8.1, 8.1.1, or 8.1.2. These are the things that they've added. So uh, things like a jobs API, where we can actually go in and look at progress logs. Things to uh, be able to discover now, right? So we can force NetBackup to go out and look for new, dis or new VMs that might be within a vCenter or a KVM cluster. The ability to look within the images, so browse the content, manage expiration of those images, change the primary copy, or do a fast import specific to Cloud Catalyst. Things like VM server credential management and VM server config management. One of the challenges that we've seen is um, admins may have to go to the VMware team and ask for credentials to talk to a specific vCenter. And oftentimes we found that the VMware team maybe didn't want to pass those credentials along directly. So what NetBackup has done has allowed us to do API calls so we can send the API key to a VMware administrator, and now they can make an API call into NetBackup to change those credentials or to change the uh, where we're pointing to from a resource limit or, or leveraging proxy hosts. We're able to manage user sessions, um, authentication management, one of the really cool features is around storage manage management. So now we can create, read, update, and delete disk and cloud storage units, disk pools, and MSDP replication topologies, all using APIs. So for people that are looking at some additional scripting, maybe some automation orchestration, becomes a very powerful tool um, for us to leverage when we're working with NetBackup. And again, things like NetBackup config management, and more importantly, and, and lastly, I would say, the ability to do a manual backup, right? How do we trigger a backup via some sort of automation or orchestration or, or some sort of portal so that we can um, have a backup that's triggered just on demand? In NetBackup 8.2, um, they added the Swagger uh, browser. So what this does is it gives you a very interactive method to look at the APIs that NetBackup Net has available, and then how can we leverage those APIs within the environment? So you don't have to be a scripting guru. You don't have to really understand um, 
the APIs in general, but you can see very quickly what command it would take to invoke that API within the net backup environment. One thing to note is if you do run a uh, one of these modules from the Swagger browser, it is actually going to call a command to your net backup master server. So it's very important to note that you do need to know what these commands do, but it does allow you an opportunity to see things in a visual format as, as, as you start exploring the API capabilities that Veritas brought to the table. So around upgrade experience, um, and, and this is a tool that NetBackup introduced, uh, I think two releases ago, it's called VX Update. So in NetBackup 8.1.2, they included the capability to upgrade clients and any client that go, going back to NetBackup 7.7. .7. You can schedule it. You can leverage a local repository. So if you had a media server sitting in, say, a DMZ, we, we can stage those binaries out in that DMZ location. And the three jobs that it ran are a pre-check. That's just to make sure that we've got enough storage available. Um, a staging, which is per, you know, pushing the binaries out to that client. And then the upgrade. In NetBackup 8.2, they're allowing for media server upgrades. So really leveraging the, the, the same pre-check mechanism, the staging, and the actual upgrade um, we, for the clients, we can also do that for media servers. And where we're seeing this is environments that have a very large footprint with, uh, with regards to media servers or a number of media servers spread across a number of locations. Instead of logging into 10 different servers, 15 different servers, or even three or four servers, we can do this all from a master server and push out the needed binaries and, and trigger and schedule these upgrades as needed. Lastly, with 8.2, um, we're able to push out any emergency engineering binaries. So again, along the same lines, in, in the event that, that Veritas identifies a, a, a defect or, or something that they can address with a patch, um, instead of us logging into individual systems and applying that patch, we can do it all from the master server and push out an emergency patch directly from the master server. So what we'd like to talk about now is just kind of our experiences so far. So NetBackup 8.2 was released at the end of June. Um, the, appliance, the matching appliance release, which is gonna be 3.2, uh, should be coming in the next couple of weeks. Any upgrade from NetBackup 7.7 .7 and forward is supported uh, directly to 8.2. So there's no intermediate release needed. We don't need to do a two-step upgrade. We are able to go right from 7.7x directly to 8.2. Experiences, uh, by and large, most upgrades have been relatively painless, as long as you were at uh, NetBackup 8.1 or higher. The reason for that is NetBackup 8.1 introduced two changes that, that many of our customers um, had, had, to, had, had to work around. One of them was the MSDP conversion. So that's where uh, NetBackup and Veritas changed the fingerprint hashing for how they stored images and, 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 and cataloged those images. The other thing that they introduced was the idea of certificates, which is really securing the communications between clients and media servers and clients and master servers. So as long as we're already past 8.1, there aren't really many changes from a functionality perspective um, that we've really had to work through. Clients that are upgrading from any pre-8.1 release would still want to follow the same guidelines that we've provided previously and that Veritas publishes. So you do have to create the NetBackup web service. You do have to create the NetBackup service account. Um, you may have to look at the MSDP conversion if you have that use within your environment and then having to, to work with and, and deal with how certificates are handled within NetBackup. So why are people upgrading? So what we found is a lot of people are, are, are looking at the new web UI as a way to ease administration and, and management of the environment. Uh, expanded API support, this is one area where, you know, I would say a couple of years ago, we didn't see a lot of attention. Over the last six to 12 months, we're seeing more and more people wanting to automate and orchestrate some of the things within the data protection environment. And the expanded API support that Veritas offers is, is allowing clients to do that. One of the really cool things that they added in NetBackup 8.2 is support for a 250 terabyte 
MSDP pool on your old hardware. It was previously limited to 96 terabytes with Red Hat and SUSE Linux and 64 terabytes on Windows, but they have increased the limit and it's now 250 across all supported platforms. There are some specific configurations that are required, things like CPU, memory, and then disk layout, how we're actually laying out the disk and, and putting it together in, in, a, in one pool. Platform support, so they did add support for Red Hat 8 as a master server, SUSE Linux as a master and media server, as well as client. The uh, virtual, virtualization support, so they now support AOS uh, 5.1, vCloud Director 9.1 and 9.5, and support for the latest uh, VDDK from VMware. Exchange, or excuse me, application support, Exchange 2019 and, and 2019CU1, and Oracle 18C and 19C. Those are, that's really just a high level list, and, but some of the main reasons why people have decided to upgrade from their existing platform to NetBackup 8.2. The other thing that was added was direct backups to Amazon Archive and, or excuse me, uh, Archive and Amazon Glacier. Cloud Catalyst support for Glacier, so the ability to send deduplicated data directly to that Glacier platform. And then again, I mentioned this earlier, support for AWS Snowball. So the ability for us to really, you know, take a large amount of data from our data center and instead of sending it across the WAN, the ability to um, quickly seed it on-prem send Snowball back to AWS, and they'll load it within your S3 bucket for you. Some of the other reasons why people are upgrading is uh, we, we've, we've come to end of life for some of the products. So NetBackup 7.7 um, and all 7.7X releases went end of standard support on May 5th of this year. End of support life is two years from that date. NetBackup 8.0 um, is end of standard support in March 26th of 2020, and the end of support life is two years beyond that. Why that's important is Veritas does require extended technical support to be purchased for support to cover between the end of standard support dates and end of service life dates. What that means from a, a, a one call perspective for those folks that have one call is data link and, and Insight Cloud and Data Center Transformation, we can still take that first call support but where we tend to run into problems is when we need to escalate to Veritas. So that's one thing to keep in mind um, from a what versions are we running today and, and the roadmap for what it looks like with 7.7 and 7.7.1, 7.7.2 and those releases, and then more importantly with NetBackup 8.0. So, you know, those really can be triggers for why somebody may want to look at upgrading to the latest release from Veritas. And that's all I had. Thank you, Clay. Thank you for attending today's webcast. An on-demand version of this webcast will be available within two to three days. You will receive an email notification once the recording is available. Thank you again for participating in the webcast.